Okay, so um, craft three. So this is now um, the third part of what we uh, started with lambda in the center, mm -hmm. async sync. Then we started to look at how to implement uh, backends for a web or mobile application. Yep. We talked about API gateway. We talked about ALB and app sync. Yes. And right now in this uh, craft, we're going to go in more detail, end to end, for a solution for a mobile or web application powered by a cloud backend, which is now uh, the front, basically, AppSync, ALB, API Gateway, with Lambdas, with some storage. Yeah, and here is for the just discussion purposes, it's just right. one Lambda, but it can be a whole bunch of Lambdas or, can be or containers, whatever. Anything. And the backend, we put DynamoDB as a NoSQL database, but again, can be whatever. Uh, exactly. SQL database, or who knows what kind of storage. Yes. And now we want to look at what could possibly be here, what could be interesting to look at that is in the front of or in yeah. the between your mobile or web application and your cloud endpoint Yeah, that we have at the moment at least. I mean the, the first question is do we need this bubble here? Uh, so we don't, we don't need it basically, I mean we can directly from the mobile and web apps go directly to the, our front end API layer implemented in one of these three services. Mm -hmm. It's fine. All of these services, as we mentioned, can have a, a web application, firewall and stuff like that. Maybe I can just add here in line with that. So we would have something like our api.example.com is, yeah. is of course where we want to be and we want to be on some kind of secure HTTPS yeah. Or, of course, WebSocket, same one. So that, that's like what we want, and like you said, we can have that already. But what could be here? Uh, the, the reason to have this bubble also is... Uh, there are two reasons, or, or three, maybe even more. <laughs> <as we're going laughs> more, more sure. Let's see. Uh, the thing is, we don't have to limit ourselves to just one of these services. We can use a combination of all three services, right? So, also, if this is sitting in one region, we can have this thing in a different region as well, so multi-region multi deployment. Uh, the reason for having something in between, so something that is fronting all of your applications in different uh, regions using different services like that, is to simplify the management of uh, things that are common for all of those. Mm -hmm. So what is common for all of those? Well. Whatever is coming from here... At least that we would plug in there? Right? Yes, so you need some kind of... Uh, let's say you need a secure connection, HTTPS. Mm -hmm. so, so you need some kind of uh, certificate uh, here that uh, terminates the uh, SSL connection and that, uh, so let's say just some kind of SSL layer, so that you have HTTPS mm -hmm. connection in between, right? Secure mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. Second, this is a, like all of these here, uh, this is a public endpoint. Whatever is a public endpoint is open to the world, open to DDoS attacks, whatever it is like that. Yeah. Yeah. So here you would need to have some kind of DDoS protection, protection layer, mm -hmm. right? whatever it is. After that, you would also want to have some kind of web application firewall mm -hmm. so that you can limit uh, certain IP addresses that are on the known uh, black or banned lists. Uh, you want to prevent some kind of uh, typical attacking like cross-site injection, uh, cross-site scripting, SQL injection mm -hmm. and all, all these yeah. kind of attacks. So you need some kind of web application firewall. Yeah. Interestingly, if you're developing multi-region deployment mm -hmm. application, um, your application in two different regions will have two different IP addresses. This is not good for your clients. Uh, as long as one client is accessing the application that is in the region closest to them, they will always be getting that IP address back and that is fine. But however, if that region for whatever reason becomes unavailable, it can be your mistake, you, are, you switched off your application there and then you expect all of these customers to go to the other deployment in the other region. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there will be an issue, there will be an issue in DNS servers in between that are still caching the old IP address. So the client won't be able to reach 
Even though your application is uh, running on, in a new region, this one won't see it until all the DNSs in between have updated their cache. So basically what we need here is some kind of um, layer that gives uh, one IP address to, to the front end. So like, uh, it's called any, any cast IP, IP address, right? Mm. Just, maybe just quickly a comment. Obviously you can do the same effect on, 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 the, on the DNS layer as well. You can you know, have multiple um, endpoints there and you can check um, something's failing, but you can do that here yes. as well. Yes, yeah. But yeah, it's absolutely important, your so, outermost layer. Exactly. Uh, also, to, um, just to mention here, what you would like to have is some kind of caching. <laughs> At least the option so you can do, right? In many cases. And, and what we're looking at now, of course, is just a general discussion because everybody wants to build a unicorn and have millions and billions of users. So these are the topics for, you know, you, you need to look at even in the beginning. Some of them will be important no matter of how many users you have. Like you said, um, having security, having security on what you're sending, having security on the endpoints, these are, doesn't matter how many users you have, because you're, it's all public, and actually if you're on AWS or in a cloud, these are just, you know, basically the, the list to go through and attack for somebody yeah. that wants to do it, and that happens all the time. Whatever application you make, as long as it has a public IP address, it is a candidate for billion requests mm -hmm. coming from the faulty um, IoT devices that are used on purpose to target your application, mm -hmm or you suddenly overnight become super popular website. So always keep that scalability in mind from, mm. from day one. Yeah. So the reason why we are laying uh, these, these things here is that there is a service in AWS that is covering all of those, and that is CloudFront. Mm -hmm. CloudFront. Or at least where all of that plugs in. Yes, so, so in CloudFront, uh, this is where uh, you have a, a service that integrates. So CloudFront basically is running on the edge locations. Mm -hmm. So uh, AWS has uh, uh, over 200 edge locations around the world that are closer to users. So whatever is in your region is being served through CloudFront. Well, why is that good? So you have this um, SSL termination there. You have a DDoS protection through a service mm -hmm. called AWS Shield. Mm -hmm. You have WAF there, Web Application Firewall. Through WAF. Uh, through, <laughs> yes, WAF. <laughs> then you have the Global Accelerator mm -hmm. service that is running on the edge that can give you this um, mm -hmm. Anycast IP. And of course, you have the what is the, the basic functionality of a CDN, and that is the caching of the static, mm -hmm. static content. But what is for me very important to know is that this hop here is very short. It could be very short, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you're using CloudFront and let's say your application is deployed in uh, North Virginia. Yeah, may maybe just quickly we, we draw that. So we have our region and it could be one or multi. Let's say it's one. That's maybe what most yeah, have. But it's not here. It's not in CloudFront. No, no, I, I, over there. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. I just want to make a, make, a, make a quick small picture here. So we have a region and just to get the, the full picture of of these edge locations. So we have like all these yes. edges around the world and it really depends on your service, on the service overall, where are your users? So they are hooking up somewhere. And obviously what you want is very short distance here. So everything is very quick, very cheap and, exactly. and so on. So in ideal, I would say in a, not in ideal, but in a usual uh, case, this can be only just one hop between the device that client is using to the nearest uh, nearest edge location. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Singapore, there is a Singapore uh, cloud front edge location. There is just one hop to get to that uh, point. And from there, you're using AWS backbone yeah, to exactly. enter the, the region. Yeah. That could be in somewhere in Ohio, in US. Yeah, yeah let's, yeah. So, and, and that's important because AWS has very um, high bandwidth, low latency, high quality, own dedicated um, internet backbone globally that they're relying on. So every, everything is served very um, reliably to the edge locations where your users are um, for this reason. And obviously the more data that isn't 
real time generated or created by the region stuff yeah. by your lambda say here in this example from your database can be easily um, uh, cached or generated on the edge exactly yeah. and, and served much faster so for me this is like a, you're entering a, a fortress here yeah. yeah so outside of this fortress is a wild west so anything can happen so this line can be hacked by whoever mm -hmm. so that's why you want this line to be as short as possible mm -hmm. so that you don't give opportunity to people to, to break it mm -hmm. but once you enter the fortress now you're in aws world where there are super smart security engineers making sure that these bad guys are outside of the gates yeah. and uh, that is the true power of cloudfront yeah but we can we can talk about a few more things about Cloudfront. Yeah, I, I think I think we should. And and one thing just to to to, um, to mention, obviously, as we we're talking about lambdas, is lambdas at the edge. Maybe you want to. Yes. So answer. that's uh, we're we're awful at these five minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We get like bonus every, every time. <laughs> it's in twelve minutes. So, yeah. Uh, there is lambda at the edge, um, which is um, great functionality of Cloudfront to trigger a lambda whenever a request comes in. Yeah, so we're here. It, it runs here. It doesn't run in there. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, yeah. that's, the, that's the idea. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. That's why it's called Lambda at the Edge. Yeah. But uh, officially, I think it's, it's implemented is a little bit different, but yeah. doesn't matter. Um, there is Lambda at the Edge that intercepts every uh, viewer request that comes in. Then it also gets triggered when the request goes back to the origin. When the response from origin is coming back and when the response is being sent to the viewer here. So you can trigger Lambda in four different places. Mm -hmm. And that is great because what you can do here, you can manipulate the, the headers. You can do the redirection. So you can check stuff. You can, you can do security stuff. Authentication. Yeah. So from here, you can make a link to, for example, Cognito. Mm -hmm. And you can see if the user is authorized, has a valid JWT token before the request goes to the region. So you can stop it right here right. at the edge. Yeah. Another good thing about CloudFront, it has a, something called a field level encryption. Mm -hmm. So you can specify, let's say if you have a form here that user su is submitting and it has several fields and two fields are very sensitive, let's say credit card information mm -hmm. or some medical data. Mm -hmm. CloudFront can encrypt this data so that your backend, for example, applications, if, if it's a microservice uh, architecture and you have 10 different services, mm -hmm. you want only one service that is needed for processing these data yes. to decrypt this yes. and use something. Mm -hmm. Other nine services, they don't need to... Um, they see, shouldn't. They shouldn't, what, what yeah. is there. So you can encrypt that field level here on the cloud front mm -hmm. and even like that protect sensitive data even from your own backend, mm -hmm. um, which is which is a great uh, service. And last, I would say, uh, why CloudFront is great to be used. We should never forget um, data transfer out charges from AWS. So if this is the limit of the region, mm -hmm. and let's say if we're not using CloudFront, everything that comes out of the region back to the client mm -hmm. is being charged uh, nine, cents is it like this uh, per per gigabyte mm -hmm. per gigabyte of data that is coming out mm -hmm. if you use cloudfront and if there is enough traffic so if you cross a certain threshold per month this can go down to two gigabyte two cents per gigabyte so if you're serving some videos or images mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. cloudfront actually can save you a lot, a lot of a lot of money yeah. for that absolutely Maybe just two, two last very quick things here. Obviously, we're talking now AWS. Yes. But let's just um, compare. There's a really, um, really excellent company also, uh, Cloudflare, which has, you know, say a similar type of um, um, technology that also does these kind of sitting really and shielding. It's like your skin. It's like the utmost protection for the system. And that's just to mention another somebody wants to, to look at. And the, the last... There is also a Kamai, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, there are plenty, plenty of them. Of I just them wanted ones. to pick yeah. one. Then the, la the, the last thing, which I think is super exciting, and we talked about it the other day, and we should do another craft, <laughs> is wavelength. Because of, we talked about one hop well, and being on the edge. It's yes. the next, we'll, next level. We'll talk about wavelength yes. as well. But one more thing before <laughs> we run this yes. uh, five-minute crafts one. within 20 minutes. Uh, yes. let's, let's say that... Um, also something that all of these goodies 
and that is important for people that are running applications uh, with uh, on-premise in data centers. CloudFront integrates with any kind of origin, uh, so it doesn't need to be in uh, in AWS. You can easily get. Just, let's delete this. Yeah, right. um, we can just add here. Yeah. So this is now on-prem. It's on-prem. It's uh, your data center and your web application there. If your web application is under experiencing DDoS attacks or has a, a reverse proxy here that can accept only, I don't know, 2,000 concurrent uh, uh, requests and cannot scale more than that, mm -hmm. what you can do is you can actually link with CloudFront. Your application stays unchanged, so you don't have to make any kind of investment there. Mm -hmm. You just link it with CloudFront and you get these benefits out of the box. Yeah, so, yeah that, that is, is uh, very interesting. That is very mm -hmm. good. And then you can make the same things like you would do here. So if these are public endpoints and then you want to prevent users from bypassing CloudFront and going into your public endpoints, you can do things like using a headers, custom headers here mm -hmm. that are recognized by these yeah, endpoints yeah. here and um, and are only allowing the requests that have these custom headers yeah. here. This is how you uh, link it. Yeah, Pe pegging these two, you know, one 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 to one. So they exactly, can, and you're yeah. even though these are all visible from outside, if you don't have this custom header that is set up on CloudFront, you won't be able to, the access will be denied. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's great. A very right. short craft again. Uh, yes. bonus. <laughs> we'll try to do one in three minutes. Yeah, next yeah. Time. we'll do a few short Cool, ones. I hope you enjoyed this and um, see you in the next episode of uh, soon to be one hour crafts. <laughs> <laughs>